adored this book. This is a big moment for me. <laughs> Time to organize my TBR cart. So I have all these books stacked up over here from my last book haul. I've accumulated these over the month of October. I have this huge gap right here that had my October TBR and some of my fall TBR books that I've read. So that's a good thing. So I would need to fill this up and then some will fit on the back too. Looking at this stack over here, it doesn't look like they'll all fit on this, but I promise they will. I don't really have any rhyme or reason to how I want to organize this. I usually just put my hardcovers on top or the taller paperbacks because they won't fit on these or I'll stick them out in the back. should have gone through my books before I started packing them but I'm just running out of time. I do plan on doing a book on haul in December for now. I'm just I'm putting everything in there and then I'll go through it at the new house which seems so stupid but it's just gonna have to work out that way. But I will say as of right now I am getting rid of a one set of my Harry Potter series. I'm just gonna put these in little free libraries or something. I just can't wait to get these books in the new house and on the shelves. You guys will see that video when that's up. That's gonna be a whole separate thing uh, and I'm very excited. So that's our progress right now. Just want to do a little update. We'll just keep packing away. I'm kind of sad, but they're gonna look really good at the new place. Hello. Oh, sorry, dude. Come on, buddy. Anyway, I still have these tote bags right here full of books that I need to take to free libraries, but I'm gonna do a whole separate video for that. Those are gonna just end up coming to the new house. If I was not addicted to books, this move would be so easy. But unfortunately, I have issues. I wanted to update you guys. I forgot to add the books that I added to my TBR cart to my physical TBR list in my Notion. So if you've been watching my videos for a couple months now, you know that I did a summer TBR takedown and I was trying to just get rid of my physical TBR and read through those while I was on a book buying ban. And I believe I got my physical TBR down to like 23 maybe when I finished that whole series. And then obviously I read books since then. I think my ending number was 19 before I added all these to my TBR card. I went through and I added them to my list. So we're at 29 now. That still is not too bad at all because when I did my book haul, I added 15 more books to this TBR. We're doing really good. I saw the nine books on my shelves from the Shadowhunter universe. So Three trilogies. I wanted to reread the Mortal Instruments first before I get to those, so I just didn't add them on my physical TBR list. I guess if that's the case, I have what 38, which still isn't bad at all. Hi, welcome to my new room. I'm starting to bring all my stuff over, and I got mail delivered here, so we're gonna do a little book mail haul type thing. I am so excited for this because I have wanted these books for years. One I couldn't find, which I'll explain what it is and why, and then the other one I just didn't purchase because I wanted both of them at the same time. <laughs> Literally. Can't. Okay, so this is Cinder by Marissa Meyer. I read this book in high school and it was for a class, so it wasn't my copy. And then I love this book so much, so I went on to read the rest of the series. There's four books. I have the second and third book, it's Scarlet and Crest, and I also have Winter, which is the fourth book, but that paperback version is like the UK version or something. And I have been looking for the paperback because it does do this in my next box, but this is Cinder, it'll match all the other books. And I just wanted this series so bad to be on my shelves and have them all match. And I've been waiting to get this book for so long. I love this book so much. Oh, there's a business card in here. Ooh, it's an Etsy shop. Wait, I'm nosy. I want to know what this is. She makes like earrings and little mini things. That's so cute. I love mini stuff. Anyway, that's the shop. Shout out to them. Um, so thank you for sending me this book. Next, let's open the socks. I literally cannot wait to hold winter in my hands. I've never seen the paperback of that in person that I need. So this is a big moment for me. <laughs> 
okay so in order to get winter i had to buy a bundle of quite a bit of books we do have cinder and scarlet which is book one and two in the series which i don't need these so i will either just put them in libraries or i don't know get rid of them somehow and then you guys there's no freaking way that i have this right now oh my god just wait till you guys see this whole series on my shelf i'm so She's beautiful. And then, oh wait, we also have Cress. Okay, I didn't know that was in there too. But a reason why I bought this bundle, first of all, people selling bundles with the winter paperback, they were so expensive and I just, I know I wanted this book so bad but I couldn't bring myself to pay that much money for these. I got all of these for, I think like 30 bucks. So another reason why I like this specific set of books was because they also had Heartless by Marissa Meyer in here, same author. This was a book that was actually on my 2024 TBR and I never picked it up. I still would like to read it. I don't think I'm gonna get to it this year, but I didn't bring myself to buy it. So I'm glad that it was in here because now I have it and I can read it. I'm very, very happy. Can't wait to have them all the same on my shelves. My bookshelf setup video is coming. I just gotta get them in here. We're moving them in today and then who knows how long it'll take me to set them up. My books are gonna be everywhere. I have some books moved in here. You guys can look at my closet right now. Yeah. I'm gonna go. I just wanted to show you that exciting book mail that I got. That's it for this portion. This video is a mess. My life is a mess right now and everything is very chaotic so I don't even know what I'm filming. I'm filming random clips at one time which makes sense because it's an ultimate book video so you're just gonna get a little slice of everything but uh, I do feel all over the place. I don't even know how many videos I'm currently filming but it's all fun. So I have a rug now. That's exciting. I needed to talk about a book. I need to get into my book talk portion of this video. I finished a novel love story last night and I just need to talk about this so bad. I ended up giving this a 4.75 stars. I literally fell in love with this book. This is my first Ashley Posted novel and I know a lot of people love The Dead Romantics and Seven Year Slip and I'm sure that I will too but after reading this I'm just so surprised that everybody loves those books more than this one because I don't understand how you can't fall in love with this book. I didn't know what my expectations were because everybody else was giving it mid reviews i was like okay maybe i won't like this but i don't know we'll just try it out and see and i cannot believe that people don't like this book i really loved her writing there were some things that were a little repetitive that i didn't like it's hard for me with magical realism i haven't read many magical realism books but it just doesn't seem like they can be elaborated on too much because you're not getting a true fantasy world with a ton of magic it's just it's contemporary it's real life with hints of magic in it i'm not sure that i really like magical realism there were moments in this book where i didn't understand a lot of things and how they concluded or how this fictional world in this magical realism aspect of the book wrapped up or made sense there were still questions that i had that never got answered so our main character visits all these different characters in this small town in these different businesses and there was one business that kept getting mentioned it was a jewelry store or whatever and it was only open during like whenever mercury is in retrograde i don't even know what that means if i'm being honest that kept getting mentioned too we never got anything on that store she never went there so i don't know what the point of that was i don't know if i missed something or if there's like an underlying meaning to that that i that just went over my head i can't understand why people going into this book wanting strict romance like 100 percent romance can be disappointed in this because of how underdeveloped the romance was should it be read as a romance i don't think and if it's marketed as a romance i don't think that it should be that way i really think this should be portrayed as a contemporary fiction with a subplot of romance it does focus on romance because our main character's favorite series is a romance series and she wants to find her happily ever after and she's helping these characters in this fictional world get their happily ever afters it's more of finding yourself and who you are and what you want to do in your life and not letting other people affect your true interest and your true happiness even the people that went into this expecting a romance read i'm still shocked that they didn't really like this because of how much this speaks to you as a reader and as a romance reader i saw someone's goodreads review and i wrote this in my goodreads review that i saw someone else say this they said that this book is a love letter to romance readers or just people who love books in general and i truly agree with that the way that this book speaks to you and the way that it's connected and written out really makes you aware of why you love reading so much and why you love these fictional worlds and these fictional characters and how you're able to escape to them and find comfort in these fictional worlds while also knowing that you have to realize that you are living in the real world and you need to help yourself and grow yourself and change into someone that you truly want to be and find your happiness like i said there were those little things that i didn't like so it couldn't be a five star to me 
but I tabbed quite a bit in here. There were some coats that I really liked. I posted one on my Instagram story the other night. I'll try to find it in here. It's your hands are gentle and cold. You use them a lot, but no one ever holds them to keep them warm. And there was also another paragraph at the beginning of a chapter that was speaking on being somebody who loves books, finding that happiness in stories. I love the message behind this book and I love the story. I love the way that this wrapped up. I do want to give one spoiler thing. So if you have not read this, I'll give you a time to stamp to skip. I'll give you some time to get prepared to get to that spoiler moment because there was a way that I wanted this book to kind of end or a certain thing that I wanted to go a certain way and it didn't and I thought it would be so good but there was one little aspect that wouldn't have worked with the way I wanted it to end. So I'm going to start talking about that spoiler now. This is your final warning. Click to the other time. If you've read this, you know that there's moments where Elsie has these books in her car. She has the series with her and one of them is blank at a certain point when she looks at it and then later on it's filled in. When she realized that the books were being filled in and AS was Anders most likely, the way that she was talking about Anders in that moment, like the fact that he knew all these characters in this world but he wasn't in this world himself and she was kind of questioning the whole time why he knew them so well and why he knew this small town so well because she kept saying like I don't remember him in the book I don't know what his role was for some reason I got so excited <laughs> and I thought that he was going to be the author of these romance books just writing under the name of Rachel Flowers it was said how much he likes romance books and he reads them himself I thought he was going to end up being the author and that blank book was going to be their story and I thought that would have been really cool but that's not a good way to think about it because Rachel Flowers passed away in a car accident so it's not a good thing to say you're the author of this book and then say that Rachel Flowers passed away you know like that would have been a very bad outcome if things went a little differently with Rachel Flowers and her life I really would have liked the fact that he would have ended up being the author because he likes romance books and it's very rare for a guy to like romance books I thought that would have been really sweet but then of course we found out that he was Rachel's fiance. It was still sweet. I still liked how he was connected with this story in this series in the fictional world but I just had that hope that he would be the one writing the series and he was saving that book for his own story. It would have been so sweet. Spoilers have ended. I'm gonna go back to just wrap this up real quick. So I gave this a 4.75s. 7.5s. I gave this a 4. Uh, bro. I gave this a 4.75 stars. I highly highly recommend this. I'm very excited to get into The Dead Romantics and Seven Year Slip and I know she has another book coming out next year. I forget what it's called or when it's coming out. It's definitely going to be on my 2025 list and I'm curious to see how much I like The Dead Romantics and Seven Year Slip compared to this since so many people were complaining about the lack of romance in this one. Those ones probably have more romance. I don't know. I'll see. That is a novel love story. I will stop talking about this. While I was packing the other day, I was just in a packing mood and I packed up all my books and I told myself when I was packing to leave one book out. I knew that I was going to finish a novel love story pretty fast so I wanted another book at the old house to have and read because I always need a book with me and I always need a book next to my bed. I just I need one available for me to read whenever I need to read. After I was reading a novel love story and I knew that I was liking it I was gonna get through it fast I was like oh shoot I don't have a book here because I packed them all up and took them to the new house. So I had to come back and pick up the next book that I want to read and that's gonna be A Rain of Rose. I'm gonna read this throughout the rest of this video and give you guys my updates because I cannot wait to see how this trilogy ends. Obviously I'm not gonna give too many thoughts on it because this is the last book in a series and a trilogy so I don't want to spoil anything. You guys will just get my basic thoughts and feelings. I still have the book shopping portion to do. I was going to go earlier this week. I just ended up moving stuff instead and trying to get that done as fast as possible. The book shopping portion is going to be postponed to Monday. It's currently Friday. I'm going to Indianapolis on Sunday for a concert. So Monday on the way back home, I'm going to go book shopping. There's a half price books and a Barnes out there. There's a lot of bookstores out there, but I'm just going to go to half price books and Barnes because we don't have a half price books in Michigan. And I hate that because I love that store. I went to one in Ohio. That's the only one I've ever been in. It's just so good because you don't know what you're going to find in there. The books are half price. It's perfect. That'll probably be the next thing that you guys see. So I will see you in Indianapolis.
a little bit up there too far. Hi, uh, yesterday I recorded a whole clip of me yapping for about 20 minutes, showing you my book haul, talking about the book I'm reading. My mic was not recording audio and it was in slow-mo. I was about to start filming my reading journal update and whatnot and I realized that I screwed up. Going into the haul of what I got at Barnes. Half price books, I went to two of them. I was only planning on going to one, but the first one didn't really have anything and it was kind of small. So I was like, all right, the second one's 15 minutes away. We'll just go to that one too. I unfortunately didn't find anything at either. The second one did have a lot, but I was only really looking for Zodiac Academy book three. The first one had book five, which I know I'm going to read the whole series. So I maybe should have gotten the fifth book, but it's also like I was only going for the third one and I don't want to buy books that I don't need yet. I want to buy them in order as I'm reading them just to not be overwhelmed with the amount of books that I have. And then I ended up at Barnes, which it was such a nice Barnes. It was more of a newer look, the lighter wood type of feel, I guess. I got these pens and I love them so much. They're a little panda and an elephant. The panda's black ink and the elephant's blue ink and they're erasable, but they're just so adorable. They had other animals. The giraffe was so cute. I figured I only need too. So we're going to use that on my reading journal next year, probably. And then going into books, I have manga that I've been, every time that I go to Barnes, if they have the next volume that I need, I'll pick it up. But I haven't been doing that since probably the beginning of this year, just because I wanted to hold off on buying manga and focus on buying novels instead. I'm currently working on Hunter x Hunter. I have the first seven volumes, so I was looking for eight every time that I went to a Barnes. And the one by me never had it. This Barnes did end up having number eight, so I picked it up because I figured if I don't, I probably won't find it for a while. It's weird because I personally like watching the anime before I would read the manga. I just feel like with manga, it's better to watch the anime first and get all that action and then read the manga. But obviously with books, I want to read the book before the movies because so much of the plot is taking out. But with manga, I feel like it's completely fine. It's pretty lined up. And then next, I did buy three books. First up for the new releases that I wanted was Lost in Lasso by Lila Sage. This is the third book in the Rebel Blue Ranch series. It's just a small town cowboy type romance feel. This is an enemies to lover. We got glimpses of this couple in the first book and they pretty much hate each other. They say they hate each other. I loved their banter. I love the way they talked about each other because you know, like they're attracted to each other and that's what we're getting in this book. But they act like they hate each other. So it's gonna be good. And then we also have the next new release. This is Hex by Emily McIntyre. This is the sixth book. It's called the Never After series. There are a bunch of reimaginings of usually Disney plots. They lean on the darker side of romance. They're not too intense, but they definitely have those dark elements. And we're dealing with the villains as our main characters. This is a Little Mermaid reimagining. I have enjoyed most of the books in this series and I really just want to support this author because when she was writing this book, she was in stage four of cancer. So this is like a milestone of her getting through that and I would love to have this on my shelf and display it. A lot of people were saying that the spine in this one doesn't match the other ones because the other spines are very dark. They're more of a black color and this one obviously is more of a purple blue spine but people were saying just let it represent what the author went through while she was writing this book and I think that's a great way of looking at it. This is like a little light in her life. Lastly the book I got to continue with series is God's Grave by Jay Kristoff. This is the second book in the Nevernight Chronicles. This is more of a higher fantasy. It's about an assassin. Her name is Mia. She's training to become an assassin because her father was executed by these leaders. She's trying to get revenge on them so she goes to this school to trained to be one of the best assassins. Very intense, a lot going on. Every fantasy that I've been picking up that is a higher fantasy, I've been absolutely loving. The world building in this is great. The characters are great. His writing's fantastic. So that is that. That is my book haul. Now I can finally get into my reading journal. We're going to go over to my area. Don't get too excited because my reading journal is very, very bland and I don't even have monthly spreads. Sorry for the awful lighting. It's raining outside and it's super dark and I don't have too many lights in here so I just got my little lamps. <laughs> I'm doing what I can do. This is my reading journal. It's very small. I got this in an owl crate box last year. I was planning on doing a much bigger one which I will do that next year. I figured I would use this for a reading journal since I had it and I received it in the owl crate box and I didn't want it to go to waste. I'm gonna try to bring you over and do an overview shot of this so you guys can see as I go through it. First page is just my cover page, my 2024 reading journal. Next we have my writing system. This is just how I write books. And then over here I have my bracket for 2024. I totally messed up and accidentally put one as my favorite of 2024 already but uh it's six crimson cranes so it's 
probably gonna end up in that spot anyway. I'm not too mad about it, but I do have to figure out my September and October favorites. October was definitely Noctacadia. Noctacadia for October. September was definitely Heartless Hunter, so I'm gonna put that right there. Okay, and then my favorite between the two of those, I'll have to say Heartless Hunter. That book really gave me great feelings. I did rate that one of five stars. Noctacadia, I only give it four and a half. So Heartless Hunter it is. Moving on to the next page, I have my reading challenge. So this is way behind, holy moly. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August. Oh my God, I don't even have September for them. I read 10 books in September, so I'm just gonna fill these in really quick. I'm not gonna make them pretty. Please don't be mad about this. I'm at the point where I just don't care about this reading journal anymore. It didn't go how I wanted to, so I'm just, you know, I'm just doing this. We're gonna do nine books for October. This is updated. I only do this monthly, so I'm not gonna fill in the two that I've read for November already. I'll just wait until November is over. Moving on to our next page. This is my little bookshelf. Looks completely awful. I believe I have to fill out every book in September and October. Oh my god, I actually am realizing that I hate this. I really hate this. I just write the title and put a box around it and hope for the best. And then moving on to the next page. I think I'm just gonna stick doing all them vertical. I'm not gonna do any horizontal ones. Oh, Winter's Promise. I can't remember if I put my DNFs on this. Like, see, that's god awful. Um, but I can't remember if I put my DNFs on this page or not. I think I do. That one was a DNF for me. And then we have Darker Shade of Magic. I didn't even spell that right. Guys, oh my god. I promise my handwriting is not this bad. But I'm doing the angle I'm doing this at right now because I'm filming is crazy. All right, Binding 13. That was the last for our October. So we're gonna leave it at that. I'm gonna update the November ones after November is over. Moving on to the next page. This is my physical TBR. I have not updated this in a while. I stopped updating it earlier this year. This could be filled up right now. I have many more books on my physical TBR that we're not on this list. I have gotten through a ton of these though. I think this is my favorite page. I'll definitely do this in my next reading journal. But since we're coming so close to the end of the year, I'm not going to update this just because I feel like it's unnecessary. We're just going to go through and circle in the ones that I have read. I did read Crave. Uh, no, no. We read Firekeeper's Daughter. Stay With Me. Read that. It's just so satisfying covering all these in. A Winter's Promise. Read that. Truly Devious. Zodiac Academy, which is not the whole series, just the first book. Heavenly Bodies, no. Ninth House, no. Fairy Tale, yes. Um, to Kill a Shadow, no, not yet. These are all my Shadow Hunter universe, so I have not read those yet. Love Letter Whiskey, no. Heartless Hunter, yes. And then that is all I have right here. This is just a nice thing to see how many books I had on my physical TBR at the beginning of the year and what I'm comparing it to at the end of the year. And this is also a nice way to look at how long I've had a book in my TBR. I know that I need to focus on these ones instead of the ones that I just bought. Moving on, this is my series tracker. I am in the middle of so many series at this point. Actually, I did end up reading that this year. The Naturals, I still have to read the rest of the series. Finish the Poppy War, The Remnant Chronicles, and Dance of Thieves and Vile Thieves check that off. Maple Hill, that is Icebreaker, Wildfire, and Daydream. I honestly don't think I'm going to read Daydream because I haven't really liked the first two. That is probably just going to be an unfinished series for me. A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, finish that. Empyrean, this is Fourth Wing and Iron Flame. Third book will be coming out in January, so that's going to take a while for me to check off. The Addicted series, I don't think I'm going to finish that either. Never After, you guys just saw I bought that book, so that'll be filled in hopefully soon. Once Upon a Broken Heart, I'm waiting for the third book to come out in paperback because everybody says the second book is a cliffhanger. Just as Springs I finished, Redigade, and then Lovely Farms. I just finished that. And that is a completed series from me. So that is good. Yeah, I have not updated this page in a while. I could have added so many more series, but I just left it at this. Next, I have my This Is How Much You Spend On Books page. October, I have my pre-order for Betting On You by Lynn Painter. And that would be trip number one, which was $9.29. And then I always do how many books that was. So this was one pre-order. And then next in October, I did go to Target and Barnes, but they were on different days. So we'll do Target number two. And I spent... $30.66 and this was three books. Trip number three in October was to Barnes and that was $57.59 and I bought four books. November, this was $58.60 and this was four books. Now adding up my totals for September and October. September we spent about $30 and then October we spent $97.00. 54. And then this is my little DNF graveyard over here. I do have to add one last one. And this is A Winter's Promise. I read this in September. Just wasn't feeling it at all. That is it for my reading journal. That was the last major thing that I had to do for this video. I will be finishing A Reign of Rose now. And I will give you guys my final updates on that book. For now, I have to get my shelves together. 
So I gotta work on that video and then that will be up a week from today. I will see you when I finish my book and then we will close out this video. Sorry if I sound a little weird. I don't feel good right now and I think I'm getting sick. I do need to talk about this and I don't really want to talk about it because I didn't really like this. Which is so unfortunate because I was so looking forward to this and this wrap up to this trilogy but unfortunately this one fell completely off for me i didn't even really feel like i was reading the same series the writing felt completely different i will say the writing wasn't the best in the first two books but i still really really enjoyed the world that we were building and the characters that we were meeting and in this one i felt so disconnected from our characters there were a lot of characters that were in the first two books that didn't seem to come up in this book or there wasn't really a huge focus on the ones that we got a lot of focus on in the first two and i would have really liked to have seen them more because they were great characters they were great side characters and you felt a connection to to them so not getting a lot of them in this book was pretty sad also the fantasy in this i understand this is a romanticy so there has to be a huge focus on the romance portion but i feel like there was just nothing on the fantasy we're building this whole entire world that is pretty unique and very interesting with all these different kingdoms that relate to a stone but with a war breaking out between their world and another world it did not seem like this was at all what it should have been there was so much at stake because they could possibly lose their world and so many of their people and it just didn't it seem like they cared. They weren't really forming any tactics to get back at the people that they were going to be at war with. I feel like the fantasy portion of this wasn't focused on too much. There were also things that we were getting hints at in the first book and I think it took way too long to get to that point. We're dealing with a main character who in the first book you get a sprinkle of their power. They know that they have some sort of power but they don't realize how strong they actually are or what they are actually capable of. And as the books were going on I was hoping that we would get a lot more of that and get our main character realizing who she truly is and what she can do with her power. We didn't really get that till the end of this book. All I can say about this is that I didn't feel like I was reading the same trilogy as the first two books and it was such a weird feeling. I was kind of blaming it on the mood that I was in because I was in the middle of moving, I was a little stressed and I just wasn't really feeling the best. Thinking back on it and reading other people's reviews, they feel the same way as me. So I don't think that it was the mood I was in. I just, I don't know. I'm just really sad. I know that the first book was definitely my favorite. I would still recommend this series. I think it is very fun. I like the characters and if you're looking for more of a romance than a fantasy then this would be for you probably. Unfortunately this was a bust for me and we finished the trilogy off on a bad note but at least I enjoyed the first two books and I still love the characters that we were introduced to. I've been filming this video for so long so I don't even know what the heck you guys have seen but uh, I hope you guys enjoyed <laughs> either way. That is it for the ultimate book video. I really enjoyed doing this though. I really liked having all these different aspects of books related things in one video. I definitely want to do more of these. Feel free to stick around and subscribe if you want to see more of my videos. I will see you in my next video whatever that may be. I hope you have a great day or a great night wherever you are and I will see you later. Bye! <laughs>